force and may see more rain, better rain chances on the horizon. And part of that in the forecast will be because of barrel. Here is the very latest and there's a lot to get to. The center of the storm is over land, but about to emerge back into the uh, Gulf waters or back over water near Progresso. Also kind of an interesting little note. This is the center of the storm, but they've got this little pocket of convection that has developed kind of removed from that. Not expecting this to kind of redevelop farther north, but just kind of an interesting to note as the storm gets over water. It is expected to start kind of strengthening, reorganizing, and there's a big question mark as to when exactly it moves on land. If you've been looking at a lot of the computer models over the last couple of days, they have been trending northward. Not really a big surprise to see some adjustments in the models, especially considering the models didn't know exactly where in the Gulf the storm would eventually emerge. Now that we know the models have a much better idea of likely farther north than at once thinking it was thought maybe it would move right across the Yucatan and kind of continue toward northern Mexico. But as we saw the storm maybe moving more northern Yucatan, it looked more likely that it would be South Texas and South Texas, by the way, had always been within the margin of error of where this could make landfall. But the big question mark is going to be exactly where it does eventually move inland because that too will kind of determine how strong it is. The longer it's over water, the more chance it has of strengthening and the model consensus has been in decent agreement with that trend. In fact, before the four o'clock advisory was issued, most of the models were kind of on the more uh, eastern or northern part of the envelope of the cone. Well, that wasn't a big surprise when we saw the new cone issue that it was also adjusted a little bit more to the north, which puts more of South Texas under the risk. Again, a question though is going to be exactly where does it move inland once it does as we watch for that potential. We'll have a much better idea of when we start to see this begin weakening because it's not going to happen until it is over land. Now this is the official forecast from the Hurricane Center. This is the Euro. The Euro actually keeps it over water longer and moving more kind of even east of Matagorda Bay and closer toward Galveston and Houston. Again, if that is the case, the longer the time over the water, the stronger it could be at landfall. The impacts to us that we're expecting and the Euro kind of gives a good example of that as the storm kind of makes more of a northerly than northeasterly turn once inland, it will start drawing moisture northward. Tuesday looks to be our wettest day with a lot of that tropical moisture moving uh, inland. Some of the models died in perfect agreement with when we start to see a lot of that rainfall, but it really wouldn't be until I think it's inland and starting to make that turn toward the northeast. One of the other impacts we're going to see will be minor coastal flooding as we could see some small or low end storm surge at about one to three feet, especially above high tide. Now this is something else that is very interesting. This is an upper level low dry air and also wind shear. Normally these would be conditions to kind of negate the storm and help to weaken it, but it can also help to create this outflow where the storms near the center are able to kind of exhaust higher into the atmosphere and grow. So while this can help to weaken a storm, it can also help to enhance a storm, and it looks like that may be the trend we're looking at with this storm, and barrel will likely continue increasing in strength right up to the point.